this, as I said, is kind of an experiment to link with people who are really sitting around a table together in the same place and then all of us and to try and create the uh, illusion or experiment with the form of being together in time and place. We sent out this shared package to all of you and these texts. And the idea of that was that we all kind of come from a common place to have a conversation. I'm going to start to do a little ritual is I wanted you to think about the rules around eating that you had when you were growing up and to just sort of reflect on them and remember them to think about if they were rules that you agreed with or you saw logic to or rules that you kind of felt um, in tension with and think about those rules if they matched the rules that you noticed when you went to other people's homes. Next I'd ask if you have a hibiscus tea made already just to pour yourself a cup. I've got one here. Then if you have a plate and a knife there, and you might have been sent some uh, pumpkin seed oil. If you have that, just pour a little bit out in your plate. We could have a little toast now. And for the rest of this uh, conversation, hopefully everyone can be having a taste. I think I'm really interested in food as a kind of accompaniment to a type of conversation and one of many approaches to kind of bring a sense of the body to knowledge production. So um, actually, I'm kind of thinking more and more as my, of my practice as one of accompaniment of this idea that, you know, you take something like this conversation about disgust, death, pleasure, love, food, contamination, and then you accompany it with something that brings people together into a certain space and that acknowledges their bodies in that space. And then the knowledge that's produced out of that is something different. So the food in this case, the particular food that we had related to the situation of grats. So the candle wax, the beeswax, that's something that a lot of people from Bush and Shanks would have um, a hive on site and the wax would be almost a byproduct of that. The pumpkin seed oil is something that, as you know, is so ubiquitous in, in grats and in styria. Um, the sausage then, it touched on Orla Barry's essay to be faced with this sausage coming out of a box after reading about a beloved animal being killed. And then the towel was actually um, an artwork that I had made before, but in the context of this, there was a hand-washing ritual at the start of the event that then led to using the towel. So for, for me, the food is really um, a kind of a catalyst for things to happen. For us to be able to connect this idea of how hand washing became so prominent in our day in our rituals to the idea as Norbert Elias writes about that the knife symbolizes these changes in society so I think there's a way to look at the world where objects can become charged and I think that's a really exciting moment and I think that artwork is not necessarily about static objects, but about charging the rest of the world with meaning. So the way that when a memory of yours instills a certain word with meaning, I think that works like this can then instill a process or an object with meaning in a way that would not otherwise happen. So something like washing your hands then opens up this kind of association that can really link and connect things together in a way that wouldn't otherwise happen. So originally the idea was to have this conversation and meal called We Eat the Ones We Love in a Bush and Shank. But because of the restrictions around COVID, at that time I was not able to travel and we were able to have a small group gather in a Bush and Shank, but not as many people in the audience as we would have liked. So we decided to open the event up and move it online. So half the audience were 
in the Bush and Shank in real life and half the audience were invited guests online in different parts of the world. This kind of context of COVID where suddenly the notion of sitting at a table is dangerous, which I think is something that we in our generation, in our place and time, have not experienced before. The idea of a threat at the table of the person across from you that they can contaminate you with their breath. So to kind of reflect on on that new condition through reading about these cultural histories and reflections on danger and and food. So one of the one of the texts talks about the a kind of story of somebody moving from one part of the world to another. So from India to the UK and then from the UK to the, to the US. And the kind of very subtle differences in society there around different things, but also around food. And um, part of this project, and particularly part of the idea of focusing on hands and washing hands, was to think about the way that the rules that we have around eating are constructed and subjective and oftentimes come from historical situations that are no longer the same that have changed so the text by Norbert Elias on the use of the knife at the table is all about this idea that the etiquette and rules that we have around knives come from a time that we no longer live in so they come from a time when there was a threat of violence at the table so the idea that you should never point the knife blade at someone you should pass it by the handle you should never bring a knife to your teeth He talks about this idea that from the Middle Ages on in the Western world, there was this kind of um, threat of violence that was slowly pushed away from society. But with that, there was this kind of unnecessarily urgent push to move away from the symbolisms of violence. So the idea of, of pointing your knife at someone as a threat is no longer really true, but yet it's a loaded symbol and and we repel that because of what it represents. So it's this title, We Eat the Ones We Love, was to try and like initiate a conversation around these ideas of eating and its relationship to our construction of civilization, our kind of boundaries between safety and danger, between disgust and pleasure.